y'all. We got some goodies in this one. Check this out. Every time I plug my phone in, this app will instantly launch. And I'm gonna show you in this video how you can make this app or any app in which you want to instantly launch anytime you connect to Charlotte. So in the last tips and tricks video, we discussed a lot of different things. And one thing in particular is the option to make a custom sound when you connect your phone to a charger. But in this one, we're gonna change things up a little bit because I know every night, <laughs> I use the nighttime app, but it does have a few steps involved. So we're gonna save that for later in the video. And in the meantime, we're gonna talk about a few other iOS 14 hidden features and some general iPhone tips and tricks. So firstly, if you are new to the channel, welcome. I go by Tech Me Out and up here, I like to talk about pretty much everything in relation to technology. So if that is something you're interested in as well, you can feel free to hit the subscribe button and that like button if you feel inclined to. And speaking of the subscribe button, we recently hit 300,000 subscribers is up here so huge huge thank you to each one of you that have shown your support in getting me to this point team tmo you definitely did your thing we did it now you know how you have the ability to hide photos by you know heading into your photos app and you know you can select your photos and then hit the share option and choose to hide the photos but even though you hide them they're still in an album at the bottom within your photos called hidden but if you want to get rid of that so that your photos are truly hidden there's a way to do so. What you're gonna do is head into your settings and then move down into your photos option. And you're gonna toggle off this section here that says hidden album. So then when you go back into your photos app, your hidden album is now truly hidden. And then if I want it back, I can just turn it on, head back into my photos and it's there with the photos in which I hid. So I'm looking at my home screen here. Basically, you know, I have that whole shortcut set up so that I can have custom icons so that when I tap on one, it basically launches the application. Now, in my case, I did download each of these icons here, but if you're interested in, you know, the finer details of this setup, I did a whole video on that. Got you covered in the description box below. But if you're the type that's been struggling to find, you know, icons and wallpapers to use, you can actually check out this app called Canva. And once you're in here, you're just gonna tap there and you're gonna search for iOS home screen. And it pulls up a bunch of different wallpapers in which you can download. You don't get a huge selection, but the ones in which you do get are really nice. And I just think would go really well with a custom home screen setup. But if you need actual icons, you can actually type in iOS home screen collection and it will pull up not only wallpapers, but also icon sets in which you can use. Now, if you're like me and you're using shortcuts on your home screen to access different applications, there's a way to actually speed up the transition that typically happens when you tap on an icon and then it loads the shortcuts app right before loading the app. What you're gonna wanna do is head into your settings and you're gonna search for reduce motion. And then you're gonna turn that option on. And basically what happens is it makes the transition smoother when your app loads up. I know it's helped me a lot. It just makes it a like more visual, smoother process. For some reason, what iOS 14, it just seems to have everybody into shortcuts. And it's something that I honestly want to kind of dive deeper into and make a whole video about my favorite shortcuts. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely let me know down below in the comment section. Now this one here, you may or may not know, but it's super handy, especially when you're rearranging a lot of icons on your home screen. And that's the ability to select more than one application at a time. So in order to do that, all you have to do is long press on an application, edit home screen mode, and then you're going to grab the app that you want and while you're still holding that application, you're going to tap on all the other applications in which you want to select. And then you can just drag it to the page in which you want it on. But I don't want to rearrange my apps, so I'm gonna just drop them back here. But I just think that's so handy, especially in those moments where you're trying to drag a bunch of apps to a folder. Now these next set of features are actually in relation to your keyboard and a few gestures you have built in there. So you know how you're typing and you're in the flow of things, especially in those moments where you're using swipe and you might need to add a number into what you're typing. A quick way to do that is to long press on the number here in the bottom left and then swipe up to the numbers that you want. You can also double tap on your screen and it'll select the text to the left of the cursor, or you can triple tap and it'll select the sentence. Now this is clutching me because I struggle with having to select on screen with my finger the text that I want. Another option that I find really useful is the gesture for undo. So you're gonna take three fingers and swipe to the left and it will undo what you wrote, or you can take three fingers and swipe to the right and it will redo things. Before this, I was the type that was shaking my phone because that's another way in which you can access the undo option. Yeah, it's 
it's not the most graceful way to go about doing so. Another gesture that is really clutch is the option to quickly copy this text. So you're just gonna select the text and after the text is selected, you can pinch in with three fingers to copy it or pinch out with three fingers to paste it. Now for your favorite people you love to communicate with, you can actually add them to your home screen using a widget known as favorites. Now I'm gonna give you the download link for this in the description box, but once you've got it on your phone, you're just gonna open it up and once you're in there, you're just gonna hit the plus symbol to add your favorite contacts. You can even add certain groups like I have here. Now I will say without the pro version, it's pretty limited, but thankfully the pro version is only $1.99 and that is a one-time fee, so no subscriptions. Thank God. So if you want more options to customize the widget to your liking, I highly suggest, you know, paying that $1.99 to do so because that's how I was able to actually change the color of the background, which is something I really wanted to do, especially because I have this stealth black kind of setup going on. And then if you want to, you know, hit up one of your contacts, you can just tap on it and it'll ask you the method in which you want to contact them. And, you know, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to call anyone, but it'll call the person then. Another little neat trick to take note of is to customize the fonts on your home screen. So the way you're gonna do that is to head over to Lingo Jam. You're gonna type in what you want here. So I'm gonna put YouTube. And then you have a bunch of different fonts down here in which you could choose from. So I'm gonna choose this one. And when you find the one you want, you're just gonna double tap like we talked about earlier, and you're gonna copy. And then wherever you paste that text, it'll appear in the way in which you copied it. So this is a really neat trick that you can actually use to customize your home screen when you're using the shortcuts option to get those custom icons that we talked about. Now for those scenarios when you're you know, on Safari and you just wanna share like a statement that's on the screen versus the entire screen, you can actually highlight the text in which you want, then select share, and then choose the person or the method in which you want to share it. And then the text in which you highlight it instantly appears. So when you download an app and it needs to access your photos for the first time, it's basically gonna prompt you about it. But let's say down the road you change your mind and you wanna give a app that once had full access, limited access. You can do that by going into your settings and you're gonna head down to privacy and then we're gonna select photos. And it's within here in which you can like go to specific applications and select it and then tell it what type of access it can have, either access to all of your pictures or you can go to selected photos and manually choose which photos it can see. Another little trick that you might like is the ability to hide a selected area within a screenshot. So especially in those scenarios where you're about to share a screenshot and you might have some personal information in it in which you do not wanna share, instead of painting over it, you can actually tap the plus button and then tap the shape that looks like a square and then just reposition it on screen where you want it. And then to fill it in, all you have to do is tap the shape button in the bottom left. On top of that, it'll also let you add an arrow to indicate something on screen that somebody might need to pay attention to. Now moving right on along, this one right here is super handy, especially when you are about to select a lot of photos. And that's the option to zoom in and out of your albums. So I can zoom in to make my view or my grid a little bit larger in terms of the thumbnails. But if I know I'm about to select a ton of photos, I can just zoom out by pinching like that and it'll allow me to see more pictures at once. Now for my fellow music lovers out there, there's actually a way built into Control Center for it to listen and identify the song that's playing around you. So right now I have my friend Sarah the Instrumentalist playing on another device, but if I wanted my phone to identify that song, all I have to do is swipe down into my Control Center, tap the Shazam button, and it'll start listening. Voila. And then once it finds the song, I can actually tap on it and it'll take me straight to the music page to learn more about it. Now, if you happen to be in a situation where you don't have any smart home devices and you're tired of seeing that little empty space within your control center where your smart home devices should be, there's a way to get rid of that. What you're gonna do is head into settings and then you're gonna go down to control center and you're gonna toggle off this option here that says show home controls. And once you do that, your smart home devices will no longer be there. So that's just a really nice way to clean up things, even if you have smart home devices. Make that a little less cluttered up in there. Sleep mode. This is a way we can ensure that we remain healthy and productive by getting the proper amount of sleep on top of winding down appropriately to get that sleep. So what you're gonna do is head into your clock app and I've already set mine up so it might look a little bit different than yours, but ultimately this is the section that you're gonna be within. So we're gonna get in there and we're gonna 
um, actually edit the sleep schedule. You're gonna choose what time you wanna wake up and how many hours of sleep you wanna get, and then your phone is gonna calculate what time you should be going to bed to get that many hours of sleep. There's even an option to help you wind down within a certain amount of time before your bedtime. You can even choose shortcuts, which is gonna be specific apps in which you can access. This is gonna eliminate you know, your distractions and hopefully limit your interactions with your phone, but still give you access to what you need if you need it. Now this next one, it's not iOS 14 dependent, but it's super handy and it's something that I use all the time and that is location-based reminders. I wanted to share this one because I know I was talking to some of my friends about it and they didn't know about it, so I thought it might be worth mentioning. So a scenario, I know I was going to Chick-fil-A and I kept forgetting to use my coupon every time I was there. So what I did one time is actually summon Siri and I told her to remind me at this location to use my coupon. So literally every time that I drove past Chick-fil-A, my phone would give me an alert to use my coupon. And it was just so handy. But that's just like one scenario. You can also set reminders so that when you get home, it you know prompts you to do something in specific, like maybe take out the trash or something like that. Another feature that's not unique to iOS 14, but handy nonetheless, is a way for your phone to call emergency services if you rapidly press your lock button five times. Because normally to access emergency services, it would be through you know your power button and your volume up button, and then you would swipe and it will call emergency services. But with rapidly pressing your lock button, it's a kind of discreet way to do so, especially if you're in a scenario where you might not be able to hit those two buttons at the same time. Not only will it call emergency services, but it'll also send a message to your emergency contact. So the way to go about doing this is to head into your settings and we're gonna search for emergency SOS, select it in the option menu there, and then you're just gonna turn on the call with the side button option. Now, if you're the type of person that has been using certain third-party apps to get the mirror image of a selfie, you don't have to do that anymore. It's actually an option built within your phone in which you can enable. So all you have to do is head into your settings, search for camera, you're gonna choose it within the menu here, and then you're gonna scroll down until you get to the option that says mirror front camera. When you turn that on, it will then actually show you the image in the correct orientation. It's not gonna flip it like it used to do. Now, here is how you can make your phone launch a specific app when it connects to a charger. So what you're gonna do is use shortcuts. Once you're in shortcuts, you're gonna choose automation, and then you're gonna tap the plus symbol in the top right, and you're gonna hit create personal automation. And once you're in this screen, you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you're gonna select charger. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure within this section that is connected is selected. Then we're gonna select next. And then we're gonna choose add action. And where it says search for apps and actions, we're gonna type in open app. And then what we're gonna do is select open app right here. And then we're going to choose which app we want it to open anytime that it connects to the charger. So in my case, I like the nighttime app and I'm gonna link it down below in case you like it too. You can even take it up a notch and add other variables to it like for it to only happen at certain locations and things like that. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want a part three, please let me know down below in the comment section so I can work on that for you all. But that's gonna do it for this one. I'm gonna just throw some more videos on screen right now that you are welcome to check out. So as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.